This is my Final Fantasy XIV Iron Man. The challenge is simple. Get as far as I can in Final Fantasy XIV by myself. No parties with other players or NPCs, no market board, no retainers, and minimal NPC shops. Additionally, for all dungeons and trials, I'll need to have either Silence, Echo, or Level Sync turned on. Last time around, we managed to barely scrape our way through Brayflox's Longstop. Sorry for calling you him, by the way, Brayflox. I didn't know you were a girl. I still hate you, though. Completing Brayflox took a ridiculous amount of time. Unreasonable for any normal playthrough. But for us, that was one of the easy grinds. Starting day one, we jumped through some MSQ and Warrior quests. On the way through the MSQ, we unlocked treasure hunts, though that was mostly just for fun. After my first treasure hunt, it was time for a short MSQ grind before hitting the wall. The Lord of Crags MSQ started, it was the end of my questing for a good long while, and time to face Titan. So first things first, we jump in and start learning the fight. His damage was hard to keep up with, but my gear was low level. It would be easy to upgrade for better defense. The real issue was coming up next. At 50%, Titan enters Heart Phase. Two auto attacks later, he starts to jail. The jail takes away all of my actions and all of my movement. I'm stuck sitting there until I'm crushed to death, hitting for 11,000 damage. The worst part was mitigation did nothing to it. It would always hit for 11,000. Titan wasn't going to be possible to level sync. There was no class that could handle it at my quest point. This would be the first fight using Silence Echo instead. I had a few ideas for what I wanted to do, but it had been a long day, so day one came to an end. Day two started, the first goal in my Titan plan was getting my warrior to level 50. Before starting the warrior grind though, I grabbed some crab oil, we did a quick leave on my blacksmith to hit level 41. The next leaves were bad, so I moved on to testing out XP gains for my warrior. Fates? Not likely. They weren't horrible experience, but they took way too long with my slow mount speed. Side quests? Absolutely not, they were horrible. Our options were slowly disappearing. It was looking like Palace of the Dead would be my last chance. If this didn't work out, I might have to grind Brayflock's long stop for seven levels. Palace of the Dead is, really, a bit of a nightmare. With a separate leveling system and gear system, I would have weak gear and start every run as a level 1, and the only way to upgrade my gear was to grab silver chests and clear floor 10 without dying. Which is a lot easier said than done when every room turns you into a frog. Soloing Palace was possible. There's even a title for reaching the end without a party. The only problem is that, normally, you try to get that title when your Aether Pool gear is already max, and I was starting with zero. So after managing to survive the constant frogs, floor 10 was cleared in 20 minutes. And all of that got me 57,000 experience and this cool sparkler. 57k in 20 minutes wasn't bad, but that would mean about 4 runs per level, and I wasn't getting much out of it aside from XP and potions, so I knew I could do better. With most of my tests finished, it was getting late, so that was the end of day 2. Day 3 starts with testing out dungeons. I had the gear and potions to farm Brayflox, but with how inconsistent the first two bosses were, I wanted to try something else. There's a very small selection of dungeons in A Realm Reborn available outside of the main scenario quests. The closest and most realistic ones were Cutter's Cry and Zemel Darkhold. I was one level below Zemel, so Cutter's Cry is our target. While I was there, I also learned Desynthesis so I could get some extra materials from dungeon drops. A short walk later, Cutter's Cry was unlocked, and after a potion restock, it was time to fight some ants. Without any gear upgrades, I managed to scrape by pretty well, so now it was time for first boss. The Myrmidian Princess was a scary fight, but the biggest problems were the ads she spawned. The worst being the Marshal. He tethers to the princess and starts healing her for as long as he's alive, so it has to die quickly. Thankfully, there's only one of those per fight, so it was smooth sailing afterwards. For a 17 minute boss run, I'd gotten 50k. Easily comparable to Palace of the Dead, and I'd get some gear upgrades from the chest. Heading up to the next boss, you don't have to fight a single enemy and can just run straight through. The problem is the boss does a ton of damage, and I didn't have the potions to handle it, so that's the end of Cutter's Cry for now. Next up is Zemel Darkhold. It was a level 44 dungeon, but the main mechanic for the first section was using Crystal Veil, a huge buff for my defense, making the trash mobs do practically no damage. 
After taking a lot of time to learn the dungeon, we made it to the first boss. The boss fight also used Crystal Veil, so the only times I took any real damage was when I had to swap to different crystals. For a 25 minute boss run, we earned 60,000 experience. Now that I knew the dungeon, I could shorten the runtime without much effort. The rest of the dungeon doesn't use Crystal Veil, so getting to the second boss was out of the question for now. After equipping the chest piece from last run, I managed to kill the boss again in just 17 minutes. These dungeon runs barely used any potions, and didn't leave me to the whims of random chance, so this was the lucky winner. It was time to grind Zemel for a while. First comes a shiny new weapon, pants, and level 45. After my sixth run, to keep myself sane, I stepped away to try another run of Palace of the Dead. But after 23 minutes, we died to the floor 20 boss. I would need to grind out Aether Pool levels if I wanted to stand a chance. One more quick attempt at Cutter's Cry before getting back to Zemel. I hope I'm saying that right. This time, I wanted to try and clear the dungeon, so after sneaking past some trash mobs, we make it to the second boss. A long fight with plenty of close calls, but in the end, we managed to take it down. The final boss wasn't possible with my current gear. Constant hits for more than 800 damage, I couldn't keep up, so no demo clear today. I used the hunting log to finish reaching level 50, and part one of my titan plan was finished. Before moving on, I jumped into Wanderer's Palace to see if I could snag some gear upgrades, but didn't get much out of it. I did a quick leave to level my culinarian, gave titan another shot, tried out the first boss of Orem Vale, some more leaves for my armorer, goldsmith, weaver, and miner, and after grinding some new accessories, it was time to put the plan into action. The crux of my plan was Samurai. At level 52, it learns a high damaging ability that I could use between my main hits and kill the heart before Titan cast a jail. The problem was there's no craftable Samurai weapons in A Realm Reborn, so it was either break a rule and use the gear I got from the quest, or spend an insane amount of time grinding Palace of the Dead floors 1 to 20 to get ironwork gear. In the end, I asked you all what you thought. The poll was close for a long time, but landed at around 60-40 to use the quest gear. While most folks wanted us to move forward, I was hesitant to give up a rule that I set, even if it was just for this one time. So from here on, the rule for no quest gear is official to prevent me from taking any easy ways out. The quest gear option gone, I abandoned Samurai and moved on to the next grind. How was I going to be Titan now? While I was running the poll, I had an epiphany. There was another way. If I couldn't kill Titan before he cast a jail, I just needed to kill the jail. A ridiculous statement when you remember that I can't attack when the jail is up, but there was one way around it. At level 45, Ninja gets an ability called Doton. Doton drops a circle on the ground that deals constant damage to anything in it. At level 50, I get a buff to increase Doton's damage, Kasatsu. With both of these, I should be able to just barely kill the jail if I can get a strong enough weapon. So now, it was time to unlock and level Rogue. After some initial questing, it was the end of day 3. As day 4 starts, I throw together a new chest piece, finish all the hunting logs I can do, complete some class quests, try out a battlecraft leaf, and grind out a few fates to hit level 30. I throw together some new knives, and with the final Rogue quest done, Ninja was unlocked. The only thing left was the long, long road to level 50. Unlike my warrior, the best grinding for ninja was going to be Palace of the Dead. The main reason was from Armory Bonus. The Armory Bonus gives boosted experience for combat classes below your highest level. So with a level 50 warrior, I would get 100% bonus XP on my ninja until I hit level 50. This is reduced at higher levels, but for now it would carry me through. So the grind begins. You know, I was hoping for Aether Pool, but subscribing works too. At level 40, I took a break to catch up on my ninja quests. With only 10 levels left, the end was in sight. Level 40 quests done, day 4 came to an end. No, no, wait, the wrong character. Okay, hold on. Starting day 5, I ran around the map and finished my hunting log. With a fancy new ring that I was eager to use, it was the perfect time for a break. So I did the level 45 quests. I took a brief excursion to Ulda to test out Dotan damage before jumping back into Palace of the Dead. After plenty of exploding silvers, I got enough Aether Pool to clear up to floor 30. It was a nice bit of extra experience, though definitely a difficult fight. Floor 30 conquered, I knew I wasn't going further than that in this grind, so I reset back to level 1 for the last time and took in the breath of fresh air. The grind was done, I was free. 
I'm definitely not going to complain about a 13 minute set. And we are... Level 50! Okay. Fantastic. The plan was falling into place. Level 50 quests done, Kasatsu unlocked, it was time to get back at Titan. Before heading to Titan, I ran to the Uldar training dummies to test out damage. To kill the jail with Doton, I would need to do around 106 to 110 damage every time it hit. Right now I was ranging from 80 to 128, but it wasn't consistent enough damage to kill the jail. That would be leaving too much up to chance. I had gotten some normal quality rosewood lumber from Darkhold Descents previously, so I made the best weapon I could, Cobalt Basilites. Unfortunately though, they ended up being normal quality. I was now consistently hitting for high 90s or above, so it was time to start attempting Titan. Okay, 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 okay. Come on. One. Three. Come on. No. Oh, one more tick would have done it. Okay. I do need. I do. I need to get up here. Close. I was so close. Back to the grind. Raw spinal and electrum ore into Electrum Ingots and Spinal to make a full set of Dexterity Accessories, and so we're back to Titan. Come on, big hit! Five, no, 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 no! Okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've just gotta run it a few times. Come on! Yes! Oh my god. One more. No, man, no, that was so close, that was such a good roll! One, okay, yes. Two. Three. I get six. It lasts. Come on. No! And come on. Again and again, it was so close until I finally got the perfect run. Yes! Oh my god! No way! Oh! No! I'm... Oh. If I had just killed myself to animation lock, I would have been so pissed. Oh, okay. Just gotta do the rest of the fight. Except, I had forgotten about the next problem. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. A second jail. I needed to kill two jails in a row to win this fight, and that wasn't even the worst part. In final phase, Titan cycles between a tumult, weight of the land, landslide, and jail. So if I didn't kill Titan fast enough, I would die to the third jail. Kasatsu wouldn't be up in time to kill a third jail, so Titan needed to go down before that. By the time Second Jail died, he had already gone through Tumult and Wait, so the only thing between me and a guaranteed death was a landslide and two auto attacks. I took some time and stepped away for a bit. I needed to make sure that if I got there, Titan would die. The timing for each Doton drop had to be perfect, so the amount of attempts it took to get past Second Jail was far too much to not be fully prepared. First, some quicksilver and leftover mob drops for poisoning potions, my old friend. Checking carpenter's leaves to see if I could make some rosewood lumber to get my weapon high quality, though I gave up on that relatively quickly. Dart frogs and spoken blood for mega dexterity potions. Some table salt and garlic to make an old goat steak. The plan was simple. If I managed to kill the second jail, I'd pop tincture. No more healing potions, just damage. Now, I just had to hope it would be enough. The first attempt back, I made it to the end, but just barely hadn't done enough damage. The second attempt was a pretty quick failure, and with only one tincture left, this was my last shot for the night. It was late, and I didn't have the energy to grind for any more attempts.
perfect here. Good rolls right there. Those are two good rolls, so I think I make it. has fallen dude oh my god yeah okay so that was titan normal um <laughs> really overwhelmingly difficult for a normal but it's done just about 70 hours of playtime 70 hours of playtime grinding and from this recording and the other recordings I've done of Titan practice, at least two or three hours of Titan. Oh, we did it. Oh, oh, it's done. Just about 70 hours of total playtime. Almost double what I was at when I cleared Brayflocks. There's only more grinds to come. Next, we're moving towards Stone Vigil and Garuda. I'll be starting to stream some of the grinds for these on YouTube, so if you don't mind the possible spoilers, why not stop by and hang out? It'll definitely make it a lot easier for me.